Mother is a mother. She is the most important person in a child's life. The most important. There is no one else like her. Just a few days before she died, she said that I should take care of the children. My children, she said. Educate them, guide them. This is what she told me. My wife was very attached to my children and to me. She loved us a lot. It was two in the morning in 1999. Majuda Begum, wife of Bilal Hussein, went into labor with her fourth child. Bilal had no money to take her to the hospital. He left his three children with their mother and went in search of money. Half an hour later, when he came back to the slum, his wife was already dead. The child was never born. When my wife died, I wasn't at home. I only came home half an hour after her death. My eldest son came and asked me, Dad, won't you take mom to the hospital? And I answered, son, we don't have the money for a hospital, but do one thing, take her to the clinic instead. But he said that he couldn't move her. So I said to him, I'll tell you what, I'll go and try to find some money. I'll be back in half an hour, nothing will change by then. I'll be back in half an hour and we'll take her there. In the four years since Majuda's death, according to the World Health Organization, more than 80,000 women have died during pregnancy or in childbirth in Bangladesh. That's 50 mothers dying every day. Like many developing countries, Bangladesh faces many problems. Poverty, overpopulation, and the lack of health and education services, particularly women's health services. Despite all these odds, Bangladesh is determined to cut its maternal mortality rate, bringing it down from 20,000 to 5,000 a year over the next decade. The question is, will it be able to deliver? Every year, according to the World Health Organization, over 529,000 women worldwide die in childbirth and in pregnancy. For over 20 years, governments, UN agencies and NGOs have pledged to bring down the number of women dying. Maternal mortality rate is considered one of the most important indicators of a nation's development. Now, in the Millennium Development Goals, 189 countries renewed their commitment in 2000 to reducing maternal mortality by 75% by 2015. Right now, you will find that the pursuit, the development and the promotion of the, the, this Millennium Development Goal is a priority for a lot of development partners. And this is because we now appreciate that without addressing maternal mortality reduction and strengthening systems to support this essential element of human health, we are not going to achieve sustainable development in the affected economies. In developed countries, WHO statistics show that a mother's risk of dying from pregnancy-related causes is one in every 2,800. In Bangladesh, the risk is one in 59. The Bangladesh Health Ministry is acutely aware of the problems. In my country, 130 million people uh, uh, is very thickly po populated in the country. So, uh, in the deliveries uh, or the labor in, in, the, in the country, it is still we're trying to go up, but still um, uh, there is a lot of uh, problems. And moreover, the 90 percent the delivery occurs in the home which is not at all uh, nicely attended. So we are uh, trying to find up uh, this uh, delivery system. The tragedies of maternal mortality don't end with the death of individual women. The families they leave behind, especially the children, go on suffering the consequences. Before Majuda's death, 
Bilal used to work in a factory. After her death, he remarried and had two more children. But then he suffered a stroke that left him paralyzed waist down, and his family life deteriorated. After I got married again, in the beginning she loved my children a lot, but now she has started causing trouble with them. For want of peace and quiet, my daughter has left the house and I have started taking my son with me. Balal now supports his family by begging. His younger son Farooq accompanies him while he begs. Balal's loyalties are divided between his two families. If a mother dies, what happens to her new baby? What happens to her siblings? What happens to the community on whom some, uh, you know, charge would be levied? What happens to the husband? How does he proceed with his life? Who looks after the children? Now the richer people may be able to afford better health care and maybe somebody to take care of the children. But the poor people, they just get into worst poverty and it becomes a vicious circle. The death of Bilal's first wife, Majuda, has had a profound effect on his children. Bilal's 13-year-old daughter is now a housemaid and seldom returns home. His 15-year-old son, Masood, collects scrap and works full time. With their education cut short, their chances for the future remain bleak. Maternal mortality, I mean, just imagine, if our mothers died at birth, what would have our lives been? A nation cannot progress with mothers dying in large numbers. 99% of maternal deaths take place in developing countries, and most of them are preventable. A few kilometers down the road, in the heart of the city, is the Dhaka Medical Hospital, one of the best hospitals in Bangladesh. Because 90% of births traditionally happen at home, the Bangladeshi women who do end up here are emergency cases rushed into the obstetric ward when things go wrong. Often, though, it's too late. One in six maternal deaths are caused by eclampsia. Eclampsia, or fits, is caused by high blood pressure, but is easily preventable if detected early. With the majority of Bangladeshi births taking place at home, by the time women are brought to the eclampsia unit here, most lose their babies, many die, and others suffer permanent brain damage or paralysis. While maternal mortality is a key development indicator in poor countries, maternal morbidities, the disabilities that result from birth complications, are often overlooked. A recent WHO report shows that more than 50 million women worldwide suffer from poor reproductive health and maternal morbidities. In Bangladesh alone, the UN Population Fund estimates six million women suffer from maternal morbidities, such as fistula. For one woman who dies, 16 much more women suffer from many disabilities, like obstetric fistula, that means hole in the bladder and rectum. There may be prolapse of the uterus, uterus descends and hang outside. There may be chronic pelvic pains. The women suffer from pain. They cannot work properly. They cannot stay with the husband because they have difficult intercourse. And sometimes that leads to family breakdown even. And many maternal inf due to infections, the women becomes infertile. Dr. Saiba Achter has done more than 250 operations on women with obstetric fistula. Today is 22-year-old Manira's first operation. When I talk about the maternal morbidity, maternal morbidity is not a physical or medical problems only, but it has a lot of social impact. It has impacts on psychological and social uh, health of the human. When a man, woman have maternal morbidities, she cannot continue the proper family lives. She became the outcast of the family. One such outcast is 22-year-old Rina. Over the past eight years, she and her four-year-old daughter have become familiar figures at the Dhaka Medical Hospital. Rina was married when she was 13. By the age of 14, Rina was pregnant and had an obstructed delivery which ruptured her vagina. Her first baby died. 
Rena developed fistula and lost control of her bowel and bladder movements. She's already had six operations but is still not cured. Like many young girls whose pelvic bones are underdeveloped, obstructed delivery left Rena damaged. My husband's family were very unkind to me. They say things like, what use is this wife? She can't make a family. She can't do anything. What good is she to us? But it was only my husband's family that was like this. After her obstetric fistula, Rena had two more children, but her husband disowned her. Now, whenever she's not at the hospital in Dhaka, she lives with her mother in a village in Naushindi district, three hours from Dhaka. Childhood was the best time for me. Before I was married, I was happy. Since I got married, it's all been downhill. Rina's mother has had to sell most of her land and livestock to pay the costs of Rina's treatment. With the family's funds running out, Rina has given her youngest daughter up for adoption. The family has learned the hard way. Rina's sister, Mukhta, is already 20, but after the problems her sister faced, she refuses to get married young. Breaking with tradition in villages like this is difficult. Government figures show that 58% of girls in Bangladesh below the age of 19 are either pregnant or mothers. And UN figures show that it's teenage girls who face three times more risk of maternal mortality and morbidity than women in their 20s. In some of the developing countries, it's part of the culture. It's part of the underdevelopment of women, the inequities that exist, the early marriages, for, 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 for young girls that are still underdeveloped, whose body are not yet ready to give birth. These are the issues that have to be addressed. I do wonder what it would be like if I were a man. And I know that if I were a man, I would never treat another woman like this. Since I've been treated this way, I'm sure I would never treat another woman like this. It's cultural practices like the social pressures for early marriage of girls that are the root cause of the high maternal mortality rate in South Asia, as well as for some of the lowest levels of education, health and nutrition for girls and women. Religious leaders are aware of the issues and say that religion should be no barrier to women's rights. I think the right given to women in Islam supersedes the rights given to them by any other religion that I am aware of. Men and women complete one another and make each other whole. Men cannot, without the help of women, create or administer a nation, a community or a family. Quite similarly, women cannot perform their duties without the assistance of men. But together they can make a home, a society or a country beautiful, fruitful and functional. For this reason, men have a lot of responsibilities towards women. Bangladesh has made significant progress recently in reducing maternal mortality. According to the UN Population Fund, the number of women dying in childbirth has almost halved in the last 13 years, down from 60 to 32 out of every 10,000 deliveries. One of the government's first steps was to focus on empowerment of women and invest heavily in girls and adolescent education. Primary and secondary enrolment of girls went up dramatically. For the first time ever, more girls than boys now attend both primary and secondary school. And in the rural areas, the government's also training skilled birth attendants and community midwives to perform safer deliveries and teaching them to refer complicated cases to health facilities. Over the last 10 years, uh, maternal mortality reduction has not reduced. We are continuing to lose a woman to maternal mortality at the rate of one per minute. This is unforgivable because the interventions that are required to save these women's lives are available 
and they are known to the global health community. They are easy to implement and they can become a, a pivotal part of any health system, no matter how poor the country. It is a question of priorities, even for the developing economies. So that I believe that it is feasible, it is possible, if the countries want it badly enough. For Rina and her family, it's all come too late. I hope my daughter does well and develops herself. I hope that I can educate her and she can possibly be a nurse or even a doctor. These are my dreams. Maybe I can't achieve them. At the moment, I can't even educate her, but I will try my best and I'm doing all that I can. Maybe I can make her a nurse. If she can pass her matriculations, she could be a nurse. Just because I am uneducated does not mean that I want my daughter to be uneducated. That's all that I want. But Rina also tries to make sure that other women don't have to go through what she went through. Rina's neighbor, 18-year-old Rashida, was married last year. She is now five months pregnant. But like other women in the village, Rashida has not been for an antenatal checkup. Yet, according to UNICEF, 15 out of every 100 women risk complications giving birth. Rina's had a long day trying to convince Rashida's family to take her for a checkup. When Rina first visited this district hospital, it had no emergency obstetric care facilities. Last year, the government established an emergency unit as well as a maternal and child welfare clinic. It has taken a long time for governments in developing countries to appreciate the important link between invest investment in health care and maternal mortality reduction and development because development is normally associated with uh, human capital that is, that is a technical or that is of a high level, such as the, 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 the training of engineers, doctors. Whereas in actual fact, what contributes to economic development and to the gross domestic product of a country and therefore determines the, econ the economy is how productive individuals in the economy are, no matter at what level they are. In Bangladesh's rapidly expanding towns and cities, the government's using a different approach. They're trying to change a culture of risky home birth and women's reluctance to attend antenatal clinics. Instead, they're taking health services to the communities themselves, especially in the slums. In the slum, though we have got the facilities, in the districts and the Dhaka cities, big cities, we've got the facilities. But due to the, their ignorance, and due to their stigma is their own. They don't like to, sometimes they don't like to come to the hospitals. So this thing we have to go for their awareness, particularly the mother-in-laws, the husbands, they have got these stigma. They don't like to come. This is the thing. Every day, Sister Samanti Biswas examines patients in slums across the city. Many come to her for reproductive health care. With volunteers and a massive media campaign, community awareness about maternal health is slowly increasing. But there is still a long way to go. There's a very close link between empowering women and reducing the number of women who die during childbirth. And educated women will know what to do during pregnancy and post-pregnancy to protect herself and the baby. Empowering women to ensure that they have a say over what happens to their bodies will ensure that they plan their families properly, they don't get married before their bodies are ready for marriage, and they are not sexually violated. One of the effects of globalization is that there are now more job opportunities for women. More than a million women under the age of 25 now work in garment industries in Bangladesh. A quarter of them are unmarried. Opportunities like these are empowering women economically and helping to break the cycle of poverty and maternal mortality in Bangladesh. As long as there is no gender equality or no full gender equality, 
women will not get the same right to health as men get or as they deserve. Safe motherhood is a human right and every woman is authorized to this right. No woman should die if that can be prevented while she's bringing another person to the world. I often remember my wife, and when I do, I go to the Azimpur graveyard. I buried her at Azimpur. Whenever I think about my wife, I go to Azimpur. I just go to visit her grave and then I come back. When anyone mentions clinics, I miss her more. For more information on maternal mortality, visit our website www.tve.org forward slash life online.